Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isertel here for Renaissance Periodization, Muscle Gain Dieting, Made Simple, video number four, choosing meal size and choosing the timing and the number of meals, of course. Last time, we finished structuring our diet into tracked, healthy, and macro-specific foods. So we know what we're eating. We're also eating a certain amount of macros, and of course, we're eating mostly healthy foods. But that doesn't describe as much as we would think because it's like, okay, are we eating all that in one meal, in two meals? How far apart are the meals? Is it six meals? We have to figure out how many meals to eat and when to eat them and what ratio of macros to put into each meal. That is basically all of nutrient timing right there. And there are a few factors that sort of weigh in on why this is important. First, a regular meal schedule has been shown to increase adherence. It's much easier to get all your meals in if you know what meals you're getting in. Hitting your daily macros can be real tough because if you don't have pre-planned meals, especially with massing, especially if you're not hungry, you can find yourself, you know, at 8 p.m., you have to smash 2,500 calories over, like, you know, left over because you're on a 4,000 calorie diet, 1,500 calories throughout the whole day was more than enough. And all of a sudden you're in basically an impossible situation outside of stuffing yourself and throwing up in your sleep or something like that. So adherence is really good because it keeps you on track. A regular meal schedule in addition makes meal prep and your daily schedule 50 times easier. If you're trying to gain muscle, and a lot of folks that struggle with eating enough to gain muscle are really in this situation, they go to work, they don't bring any meals. They're working and they're on a super productive streak, the boss calls, the client calls, all of a sudden you're on a bunch of phone calls, you notice, oh my God, it's 4 p.m. Oh shit, I missed lunch, I missed my mid-morning slack, what the hell? But if you prep all of your meals, you have your meals timed in advance, you just take out Tupperware from the fridge at you know 11, 15 a.m., eat your mid-morning snack, at 2 p.m. you eat your lunch, and then at 4 p.m. when you check your, you know, your clock or your watch, you're gonna be like, oh wow, like, uh, yeah, I did a lot of work today, it was really great, it was a super crazy day at the office, but I got all my meals in because they were all, always here the entire time. I just set a few alarms on my phone, a few reminders, the RP Diet app uh, actually does all that for you. Hint, hint, wink, wink, buy our stuff, I need money. But in any case, that makes the situation much easier and just much more likely you'll hit all those numbers. It's especially if you struggle eating, especially if you're not hungry, you may actually forget to eat. And then you're in a situation where like, you had a decent week of muscle gain training, but three of the days during the week, you just didn't eat enough. And sometimes you can't dig your way out of that. And it essentially just becomes another week of maintenance. You're not training so hard to try to gain muscle to just maintain, right? So that's not a really good thing. And of course, proper meal size and timing makes your workouts better. It makes your workouts sort of feel better. It, they're more effective for stimulating anabolism and preventing catabolism. Your daily energy is higher. And of course, you can sleep better. And in the case of mass gaining, eating too much at night in that earlier example can make your sleep really crappy. You wake up like covered in sweat because the carbs are digesting and all this stuff. A lot of times eating a lot before you go to sleep is linked with sleep disturbances and not the highest quality sleep. There's a lot we can do there. And of course, a proper plan can allow you to eat more if you need to. And here's the big thing with that. If you're pushing food in such a way that is difficult, which as you get to a certain mass level will happen to almost everyone, if you don't eat at the times you're supposed to and the amounts you're supposed to, your hunger just isn't enough to keep you eating naturally and you get to the end of the day with an insurmountable calorie surplus left over that you have to smash. It's not going to happen and you're not going to get the results. So as you get more and more advanced and bigger, this meal planning and meal timing really adds, absolutely earns its weight more and more and more. So... How many meals are we supposed to eat? Well, you technically can eat one meal per day and do just fine. You're not watching this video because you want to do just fine. You want to do a little bit better than just fine. So you may eat something like three to five or even more meals per day than that. Three to five is a great range. You can eat six. Anything past six, like seven, is just completely superfluous. And if it makes sense with your schedule, if you really f like to eat frequently, great. But three to five is really kind of our golden number because it gets a couple of things going for us. First, it lets you eat a lot of food total per day. You may think you can eat a lot in one meal and you may be correct, but if you eat only one meal per day, every day is like a 4,000 calorie meal, that's kind of insane and most people just can't eat that much in a single day. So by spreading out your meals to three or five meals or anywhere in between, you end up in a situation where you can eat until you're pretty full, eat until you're pretty full, eat until you're pretty full, and then you've gotten tons of calories just by sort of meticulously splitting them up and actually doing all the work. It's like this. If you were to try to do as many push-ups in a day as possible, don't do that at home. It's a fucking stupid idea. So the whole thing is pointless. But just as a quick analogy, 
and, and I gave you an hour, you could probably do a lot of push-ups in an hour. But at a certain amount of time, your muscles are too fatigued and it just wouldn't work. You just can't do any more push-ups. You maybe get, I don't know, a thousand or something like that. But what if I said you had the whole day or like 16 hours to do push-ups? Well, of course you'd get more, right? Because every time you fatigue, you can take a break for a while and come back and do more. Same idea with eating. When you really have to push the food, you need the whole day to push as much food as you need. One or two or three meals may not cut it. Three, four or five meals may be a much better idea. Of course, you need energy for training and eating a little bit, a few hours before training is the best way to provide that. So again, meal frequency has to be at least before training. Eating after training is really important, especially for the nutrients that support muscle growth. So at least that's two meals right there, pre-training and post-training. And of course, you want energy for your daily tasks. So you're not just trying to gain muscle. You're trying to be a productive human being. Hopefully in society, you are already. So you need other meals spaced out somewhere else. And that ends up, yeah, being like three to five meals or something like that. How do you want to spread those meals though? Because you could technically have five meals, have a meal at 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., so on and so forth. And by like lunch, you've had all your five meals for the day, meals for the day, right? You want to spread them a little bit more rationally. You want a meal a few hours at, at most after waking. After you wake up, catabolism, muscle breakdown is pretty high. You want to mute that right away. And of course, if you have trouble eating, all of your calories through the day, you kind of want to get a good start on eating as soon as you wake up because that gives you more time throughout the day to eat. If you spend like three hours after waking not eating, you've constricted your calorie window quite a bit, which for fat loss can be decent. For muscle gain, especially when you're having trouble eating, not the greatest idea in the world. So a meal a few hours after waking or fewer, a post-workout meal to fuel muscle growth, and of course, ideally some food before, uh, you know, several hours before to get lots of energy sort of capped off have a great training session, great big post-workout meal to begin that anabolic muscle building process. In general, throughout the day, a meal at least every six hours, more like every four to five, that's been shown a few times to maximize anabolism over the long term, maximizes muscle growth. And of course, a meal within two hours of bedtime. Uh, there's a bit of a sort of fungibility there. If you eat the meal way, like, you know, four hours before bedtime, it's probably not the greatest idea because then by the end of the, uh, of the night in your sleep, you're not really supporting muscle growth and you're actually potentially losing a little bit of muscle. You regain that muscle, no problem, but the net gains over time might not be as great. You don't want to eat really, really close to bedtime, like right before in most cases, because your stomach will be uh, sort of prioritizing digestion instead of just sitting there. And then all of a sudden that can actually interfere with sleep, especially if it's a lot of food, you can be uncomfortable. Like you can't turn on your tummy where you maybe normally sleep because you're like, oh, holy shit. Like, um, I'm so full, this is just wildly uncomfortable. So we don't want that. But like um, uh, your last meal of the day happening between two hours and one hour before you go to sleep is your generally great idea for most people. And that's how you spread out those meals. So three to five meals generally spread out like that. What about macros, okay? Protein, we spread relatively evenly. Every meal has about the same amount of protein because muscle growth is a real continuous process. It occurs over days and not hours. So it's not like right after the workout, you want a ton of protein and then three hours later, you want a little bit because the muscle growth has petered off a bit. Muscle growth actually accelerates for hours after training and then for hours and hours and hours and days after training stays, stays elevated and after two or three days, it starts to come back down to normal baseline levels. So every four to six hours on average, except for the nighttime, which is a little longer, you're going to feed yourself roughly the same amount of protein. Carbs are a different story. Carbs are good for energy before a workout. And they're great for recovery after the workout. So you want most of your carbs, or sorry, a disproportionately high amount of carbs through the day to be post-workout and pre-workout, and then potentially fewer carbs at later times. That's generally a good template until and unless on a mass gaining phase, you start eating so much food and so much carb that someone might say like, hey, it's breakfast, you're eating 100 grams of carbs. Why? You don't train until 4 p.m. And then the answer is, I just have to get 700 grams of carbs today, and my post-workout meal has... 150 or 200, which is crazy. I can't eat any more carbs if I just eat carbs all around the workout window. I got to spread them out. So when you have to spread them out, do it, but make sure more of them on average, just by a small fraction, are around that workout window. And fats have the opposite behavior as carbs. Most of them stay away from the workout window. So if you work out in the middle of the day, your morning's going to have lots of fats, your evening's going to have lots of fats, very few low fat situation pre workout and post-workout because fats generally tend to slow digestion. And especially if you're having really hard workouts and you're stuffing yourself, those two don't gel very well because at high reps on the leg press and squat after you've had a Chipotle burrito half an hour before, it's coming back up the other way. I guess you get to have the burrito again, but in reverse. Not as good as it sounds. Maybe it sounds bad and it's as good as it sounds. So we don't want to go down that path. So 
We want to keep fats lower coming into the workout, plenty of protein and carbs a few hours before. That way we don't have the situation where we start lifting. We're like, oh God, like this food's got to go somewhere. And if I keep lifting super hard, it's going to go back the other way, right? Bad, bad deal. So quick sample meal plan from you guys. So a 150 pound person from our last video, daily macros is 150 protein, uh, 250 in carbs, 60 grams of fat, pretty standard. This is where you would sort of begin muscle gain. And Actually, this, you know, this plan, I think I just copied and pasted it from the fat loss diet because here's the thing, your mass gaining diet will often begin right after a fat loss diet and it begins with literally the same foods and everything else. The stuff you layer on top of it later as it gets tougher, that'll be different and we'll talk about that in a future video series. So this has a lot of the same stuff as our fat loss guy did, but notice the carbs are higher uh, around the sort of workout time and they're lower out, uh, outside of the workout time. That's where the fats are higher. Just pause the video if you like, take a look at those uh, sort of sample amounts, and you'll notice that the protein's roughly the same or similar between meals. Give that a look, it should make plenty of sense. All right, so next time, we're gonna talk about supplements and hydration to make sure that's all squared away, and then the videos after that are gonna be more advanced about how to manipulate our core diet that we've built. And so far, we've built a really good core plan, and day to day, your eating doesn't have to be identical, but it should be pretty similar. Multiple, you know, four on average meals per day or something like that, protein every meal. Some days are shorter, some are longer. Some you train twice a day, some you train zero. Sometimes you train once and you have lots of carbs before and after training, sometimes fewer, but the general patterns are pretty similar. So your days don't need to be identical, but they should be pretty similar. This is really good for getting on a consistent plan, having repeatability, predictability, and making sure that you're sort of check plusing all of your columns to get yourself the best chances of growing muscle. Next time we'll talk about supplements and hydration. Real quick video to checklist that because there's not a lot going on there. And then we'll talk about the more advanced manipulations to actually get where you want to go from your first best guess, which you can put together just with these five videos alone. Folks, see you next time for the next video.